Hello and welcome to Provost Gaming and Neverwinter with the Scourge Warlock class. Made a bit of progress with this character, now level 14. I know, it seems kind of slow, but I only can play this for a couple hours a week, ultimately. But uh, I've learned a few things about this class. We've unlocked a couple of new abilities I'd like to showcase at some point. For some reason, my FPS is quite low. I'm hoping that if I change zones, that's going to fix things. So let's move on to the next quest while I talk. Alright, so the Scourge Warlock, now that I'm level 14, at level 10 you unlock the Warlock's Curse ability, which is something we already knew a little bit about. So if I hold Alt, you'll see it here. Warlock's Curse places a Warlock's Curse on your target, increasing the damage they receive by 20%. You can put it on up to three different targets, but the damage bonus will be divided. Some powers will have additional properties when used on an enemy affected by a curse. Killing Flames does not. But uh, Infernal Spheres does. Targets damaged by Infernal Spheres have a chance to ignite with a lesser curse. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's a totally different curse. I saw the blue and I made an assumption. Vampiric Embrace, though, that definitely does. So, look at the bottom. You see Curse Consume. If you have a curse on your target, you also will gain some temporary hit points equal to double the amount of health stolen. But the curse is, of course, taken away. Now, that is actually not a big deal. Why? Because there's really no reason why you can't just spam the curse on a target. There's no animation. There's no time. Shut up, Joseph Linkletter. All you're doing is talking. Yes, 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 yes. I'll go subdue your sick wife. Hello, Razad. Thanks for the warning. All right, so for example, we're about to attack this woman right here. I'm going to curse her. Now, you can curse, and it doesn't necessarily... Whoop, whoop, whoop. You can curse, and it doesn't actually uh, gain their attention, so you can curse targets without drawing aggro. So while your group, for example, is setting up for the next uh, poll, you can target the mobs or the bosses or whoever you want to do damage against, and it won't, uh, it won't affect anything. Alright, now I'm going to consume the curse with Vampiric Embrace. Notice my health bar on the has turned yellow and part, part me uh, at the very top. Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate at the same time. That's the temporary hit points, and those will eventually go away. Notice also that I can immediately put the curse right back on her. Boom. For example, let me consume, and the curse is gone, and tab, and there it is again. It's really not hard. Super duper easy to put that curse back on. Let's use some killing flames and start getting things on here. Alright. Yeah, so basically the curse is a really interesting mechanic, and the fact that you can apply it to multiple different mobs really does give you a nice DPS boost. But where that really comes into play is the fact that you, if you want to play single, uh, single target DPS against a boss, you have a massive advantage. A 20% advantage, in fact. Ooh. Arcane skill points. That's nice. We'll just grab that real quick. Okay. There are actually a couple of other things that we also got that I haven't shown you yet, and I'll probably throw that on there now. So, for example, Accursed Souls is a new daily power instead of Brood of Hadar. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that down there, and we'll see if we can't use that. What this is going to do is it's going to heal myself based on the number of nearby enemies, and uh, I believe it will do damage as well. Also, I will get a Soul Puppet when I use that. Pretty nice. The other alternative is to use Flames of Phlegethos, I think? Liquid Eldritch Fire drips over you and your target, uh, dealing damage over time. The intense heat deals 25% of its damage to nearby enemies. So it does a lot of single target DPS with some AoE. Uh, it does, however, about the same amount of damage, a little more, than the Brood of Hadar, and Brood of Hadar also slows. So I left Brood of Hadar for now, but they're both interesting options. Let's talk to Razan and move on with the storyline. Dead rats sometimes move blah, 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 shush. Okay, now we have to go and deal with a bunch of dead rats in the sewers. No sweat. Uh, and I will say one thing I am disappointed about is, you notice I used Vampiric Embrace to heal and consume the curse, but it didn't really have much of an animation effect. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more sparkle, because, you know, who doesn't like seeing lots of green flames and other cool things to indicate that they've done something awesome, but I don't really see that with that power. It's a little... A little underwhelming, I will admit. But very useful. It actually makes solo leveling a whole lot easier to have a reasonable heal. I tell you what, when I was leveling up my Trickster Rogue, not having any method of healing made the game so, so much harder at some point. So, we'll just move on with that, shall we? I have had a chance to look at some of the endgame content. Dragons, for instance, are becoming increasingly commonplace throughout the world. Um, it's part of your campaign. Whoa, that's weird. My effects are all messed up right now. They're blocky. 
Uh, if, the, if you haven't already figured this out, you don't already know this, there are campaigns in the game. Um, where do I see those? I don't remember. There it is. Boons. I'm sorry. Alright, Boons. This is something that's been released pretty much with every uh, module, but it's a campaign as you progress over the weeks. It basically adds a bunch of dailies and it unlocks more dailies as you progress. And you can get some special permanent uh, boosts to your character. Very useful, but it does require a while of grinding, quite frankly. New campaign was released with the Tyranny of Dragons, and it does involve actually going out into the wild and hunting dragons that spawn every, I want to say, half hour? They look kind of cool, and they do require rather big uh, groups. They're basically a world event. Pretty nice, pretty fun. Uh, I would say the dragons maybe could have been a bit bigger and more interesting, but... You know, come on, how cool is it to fight a dragon? It's always it's always very satisfying to fight and kill a dragon. Alright, so there's Dor uh, Dorothea link letter. I'm going to escort her through this against a bunch of undead plague rats, and uh, hopefully she doesn't freak out too much. Okay. Now, one thing you'll also note is I've upgraded some of these powers to rank 2, which gives them additional damage. Oh. Let's use my daily power, shall we? Bam. That's what it looks like. And based on the AoE damage, I do get some healing. Let's go ahead and get her back to normal. There we go. And I got a soul puppet out of it. It's useful. I can imagine that uh, since you're going to have access to two different daily powers, having one for damage and one for healing could be useful, give you a bit of versatility. But for now, I do think that damage is probably my best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and put Brood of Hadar back down there. I'll show you feats in just a little bit. Let's curse this guy, and let's begin doing some damage. Get some Infernal Spheres going, and because I upgraded that to rank 2, I do get extra spheres automatically. There you go. Now, there is something I learned about the Soul Puppet. The Soul Puppet does a total of 5 hits, and then it disappears. Oh, level 15. How nice. Perfect timing. And boom. There you go. It does 5 hits, and then it disappears, no matter what. And then you'll have to resummon it again. Now, if you continue to use abilities that would have given you another Soul Puppet, for example, the um, the Killing Flames, or probably even, uh, even with that daily power I just showed you, it does boost their damage rather substantially but it still means they're only going to do five hits. Then they're going to disappear, then you're going to have to start all over again. There's no avoiding that. Notice I just put the curse onto two different targets there. Once one curse target is dead, well, now I start doing a bit more damage to the rest. So it's actually a really good way of dealing with mobs. If I want to do more single target damage, I only keep out one curse. If I want to start doing some AoE damage, it may be worth uh, attacking multiple targets with the curse. Bam. Let's give her the elixir so she doesn't turn into a horrible monster. There we go. A worked moonstone. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, my inventory's full. Of course it is. Ugh. All right. Restoring hood. Meh. I will say, the orbiting effects never gets old. It's always really cool seeing that stuff. I love it. So, let's see. We got some new power points. Where do I want to put that? Um... You know what, let's go ahead and grab Flames of Flegathos, or whatever, and let's go ahead and add that to my daily bar, and as I get action points, maybe I'll get to use it, and we'll see a new effect. That could be kind of cool. And then after, as soon as I get through this, I really can't leave this uh, lady alone, but at some point I want to show you some other things. Alright, let's curse, curse, curse. There we go. And start doing some damage. Bam. No problem. Killed 50 lycanthropes. I thought those were basically like werewolf kind of things. These are these are rats. I guess it only is a transform? I don't know. There we go. <clears throat> Perfect. Yes, yes, I know. She's freaking out. Let's use my ability, shall we? Flames of Phlegathos! Ooh! Skull is dripping acid all over him. Don't you feel sad about that? Okay, I need to give her the... Oh, where'd she go? There she is. I need to give her the elixir before she turns into a monster here. There we go. When she gets frightened, bad things happen. That's because it is, lady. Don't worry about it. It's all cool. We're all good. No problem. There we go. Consume the curse. Reapply. And honestly, there's no reason not to have a curse on your target no matter what. Because it's so easy to spam it. Literally, if you are targeting something, you should have the curse on it. There's no reason not to. 
So basically, that means that the Warlocks get a 20% passive bonus to their damage if you're playing it smart. At least, sorry, at most 20%. That's pretty awesome, all things considered. Alright, let's take a look at the feats. I have two feat points. Uh, I'm going to grab additional encounter power damage. I did take straight up extra critical chance and a couple points in additional action points when attacking a cursed target. Um, I haven't seen a single worthwhile guide on the Warlock yet, so I don't know what a proper build is for this. I may very well... Oh, look at this. You got funny hair, dude. And she's going to totally flip out. How he saw her from this distance, I don't know. But, alright, angry woman. Yeah. She's, um... Yeah, she's, she's having a particularly interesting month, let's just say that. All right, go on, Dorethia. Go and kill things, have some fun. Fight on my side. All right. Kill, kill, Infernal Flames. There we go. Okay, there hasn't been a single guide that I've seen thus far, so it may very well be that some of the options are better. I probably will have to respec at some point. There is additional hit points, uh, less threat, or your Shadow Slip consumes less stamina, which is useful, but I'm not sure if it's quite what I want. So I'll have to play a little bit more with that later. For now, I'm just kind of figuring I'll stick with uh, extra crit chance and with uh, extra action points. So that's why I've gone with what I have for now. Whoop, let's get out of there. Yep. Now I'll just drain some health out of you, reapply the curse, throw some stuff at your face, maybe get some spheres going. There we go. You guys are more than welcome to critique my choice with the feats. It may very well be that there's a better option that you're seeing and I'm not seeing it. If you are, by all means, leave a comment. Tell me what your build is looking at. What's your strategy? I'd like to hear about that. All right. Well, Dorethia is back to normal, so let's talk to First Joseph Linkletter. Picked the wrong time to get their revenge. All right. Thank you for dealing with them. Let's move on forward to the tower. Now, what else did I get? Yet. A new task. How yeah, enchanting. This is brought up the sage to learn about enchantments. That's pretty useful. You can enchant a lot of your items. For example, my armor does have a basic defense slot. Notice, by the way, that the um, what the armor is starting to look like as I progress. I probably should enable the visuals for a helmet. That looks kind of dumb, in my opinion. Not too bad, though. All in all, it's it's actually a pretty awesome looking armor set, even as is right now. I still do not have any companions yet. I'll probably be going with either the cleric or more likely the man at arms to be a tank. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Not much else to talk about. I did throw a couple extra points into Constitution and Charisma when I leveled up, but that's about it. Okay. Oh, we have... Let's see. Apply to Curse. Notice that none of them are aggroing on me for applying the Curse. I can do this safely without any consequences. Let's use my Daily on Fang. Here he comes. Come on. Bring the acid over to your friends. There we go. There we go. Come on. Yeah, you know you like this. You know you like it. Come on, Fang. Come on, like him throw. There we go. No sweat. We'll just take the Huntsman down real quick. We'll throw out a couple more spheres. Oh, they brought friends, did they? That's rude. I don't like that. Let's consume the curse. Reapply. Attack. Killing flames. Expanded Enforcer is actually proving a little bit tougher than I would have liked. This is about the point when I would like to have a companion, but they didn't give me one. Ooh, a Hexer. I'm gonna curse you. And throw a few bolts at you, and drain your life, reapply the curse, see how it works. There's no reason not to have a curse up at literally any given time. Okay. So yes, I'm gonna dismiss this. Uh, when it comes to the um, professions of the game, I would re always recommend that you focus down leadership first. It tends to level up a little bit faster. It can start earning you Astral Diamonds. Uh, it's just all in all a pretty solid choice. All right, now we'll move forward. I think this is actually about where I'm going to cut the video here because we're doing just fine. And I don't want to move on to the next section because it's a long, long quest, so I'm going to avoid this. But anyway, that's the latest update with the Scourge Warlock and what I've been learning as I get some more abilities. Whoops. Sometime pretty soon. I'm hoping I can show you, for example, Dredge Theft or some of these extra... Uh, class features. We'll see how that works. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been Provis with Provis Gaming and the Scourge Warlock class. Be sure to stay tuned as I continue to level up the character and show you some more of the progression of the class. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.